Hello, fellow fantasy sports fans. Welcome to MFSN, the Hub's fantasy baseball draft show. Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. I'm here, as always, with Casey, Vlad the Bone Scheinvold, and Ross the Boss. And I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Dr. Dan Radner. Good to see you guys. That's Dr. Dan Radner. I'm Ross the Boss. That's Casey, Vlad the Bone Scheinvold. And we're live on MFSN, the Hub. We're talking relief pitchers, saves, holds, who you should pick up, who you should not pick up. It's going to be a great show. Go ahead, Dan. All right, it yeah. Like, it feels like the tight end preview show in football. Yeah, well, <laughs> at, least, at least it's not kickers. kickers defense. <laughs> yeah. No, but I actually, I, I know what you mean by that in a way, but at the same time, closers are a very integral part well, of yeah, what I we mean, think about. As, tight ends, as, we don't think about that much. As frustrating as it is, he who wins the closer market is at such an advantage, huge advantage, yeah, in the fantasy season because he who saves, wins the closer market that's a great quote, Casey. I got to write that down on a piece <laughs> of paper. <laughs> you can just watch this wall. over and over, that's right. Just it's recorded, yeah. I gotta, yeah. So, I, I will say this, guys this is our this is our last preview show. We've gone through all the positions, this is it. So, go back and watch the different positions if you're preparing for your draft. And we hope we've gotten you well prepared. It, it's funny, as I prepare for the draft more and more, I get more up to speed. As you guys know, on the starting pitcher one, I, I actually was like, whoa, there's certain people who are out that I didn't even realize are out. Well, we've now had our first draft, so I'm completely up to speed, and that means that I'm well aware that Devin Williams is hurt. So, yes. you know, yeah. and he, he was probably, I don't know, were you going to have him at number one? I was. He was number one for me. Yeah, that's the interesting, you know, it's like I said to myself this morning, I'm glad we didn't do this show on Tuesday. Because right. <laughs> we would have our number like Garrett Cole. Last week we talked starting pitchers. Right, hold hold on one second. I'll be I'll be back in a second. Give me one second. I'm sorry. Go All for right. it. Garrett Ross, Cole was Ross out. See, Ross is now injured. I mean, it just uh, it's crazy. Garrett <laughs> Cole was one or two on all of our lists, or one, two, or three, and now he's out. So right. Well, we and you know, we try to we try to push these as late as we can because of that. You know, there's gonna be more injuries, there's gonna be news, but we leave closers for last, especially because even without injuries. There are jobs up in the air. I mean, like, who's the Rangers closer? Do you know? Nobody knows. Off uh, the top of my head. Maybe, well, maybe the manager. Well, I, I think it's I'm back. I think it's gonna be could be Robinson or the Cirque. I'm not quite sure. It's one of those two guys. Uh yeah, sure. I I, I don't know. I, it's probably committee. I mean, they always do that. There's nobody that's definitely coming out that they're saying right now. Right. And now now the Brewers, they're probably thrown into committee also with Devin Williams out. So let, let we're starting at the back end. We're, we're, we're talking about the, the deep dives. Let's get into the top 10. We all had Devin Williams way at the top. I had him number one. Then I heard that he might be hurt. I moved him down the list. Then I heard he is hurt. He's now out. Just so people who are watching know, he's out at least three months from what I heard. Yeah. Yeah, he's so, out three months. Um, so now he I becomes a back-end guy that you pick up at the end of your roster, maybe. Or Devin Williams? Oh, I'm absolutely drafting him at the end of the draft. Yeah, I mean, but at the because, end. Because he could be that kind of secret weapon in July when and everybody's can, trying to trade stash for a closer. And, yeah. and it's not like you're just holding him as a bench spot. You can actually stash him as, a, as an injured guy. So let's do our top five. Case, we'll start with you, then I'll go to you, Ross. Uh, well, I think, I mean, one and two to me are like one and one A, and that's Edwin Diaz and Josh Hader. I find that interesting because Edwin Diaz, because he blew out his knee in the World Baseball Classic last year, hasn't pitched in a year, but he's yeah, still, but he, he, he right. strikes, and Josh Hader has been, I think he had one bad year a couple of years ago, or one for him bad, for everybody else, it was probably top 10. Um, but they're clearly one and two. At number three, even though he didn't have the greatest year last year and he didn't strike out as many, I still like Emmanuel Classe of the Garden Guardians. Um, 102 mile an hour bowling ball sinker to me is just always going to be um, a good pitch to have. And then it's the 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 Twins, Yoan Duran, and the Giants, Camilo Duvall. I think those two have kind of the nastiest strikeout repertoire to be uh, consistent in games. I like pitchers that don't rely on contact to make outs at the end of games. Yeah, and well, I mean, not only that, but if they get more strikeouts, they're going to be just that much more valuable to you as a pitcher. Ross, let's go to you with your top five. How much do you concur with what Casey said? I, I, I agree. Casey did a great job. I mean, you know, Casey's spot on all the time. I can't, I can't say he wasn't. 
But let me just give you guys some facts about relief pitchers compared to last year. You know, last year, the two top relief pitchers were on teams that had 70, like less than 80 wins. I mean, so when you're wow. drafting, you're saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to take the closer Phillips for the Dodgers because they're going to win 100 games. It doesn't mean he's going to have the best year. I mean, the two best relievers in that one, the, the best in the national, best in American, both teams had under 80 wins. So when you're drafting, don't look, don't look so much at wins. You know what I mean? Look at their job being, being there in one run games. I mean, uncle Ted can tell you that in a second and welcome uncle what up, Ted. Uncle Ted, <laughs> uncle Ted says, know, what I mean, so, so, so don't be so dependent on the team winning a lot of games. Don't, don't take a white sock closer. Of course, don't be stupid. But, but again, if you like the Indians, who I like class say, he's my number one guy. I'm worried about Diaz because he's coming off an injury. He hasn't did a pitch last year, Casey Scheinfeld. And all of a sudden you think he's going to be back to form. I don't know. I'm not taking that chance. Yes, I am. Also, also, but, so, yeah, I, I, but I also like one. Gordon Romano. I love, I love the, I love the Blue Jays closer Romano. He's Italian. He's a great. He throws heat. He throws so hard, Uncle Ted. Oh God, I can't wait to I can't wait to draft him. But Romano, I love. Um, it, it's really a shame about Devin Devin Williams going down. I love Duvall, like you said, the Giants closer. I think he has great, unbelievable stuff. Um, he's definitely on my top five, even though the Giants are not going to be that competitive. And then Andreas Munoz of the of the of the Seahawks, I was going to say of the Mariners. Uh, I mean, I saw him pitch last year and he got hurt, but he's another guy that's coming off an injury. But if he's back to form, he's definitely a top five relief. Really. This guy throws heat and it goes hard. Um, I am worried about ACS. I, I'm worried about a few relief guys. I think they'll be drafted too high, but those basically are my top five. But I like everybody except Diaz, who Casey said. Okay, I'm going to give my list in a second, but I am just going to say one thing. Like, almost none of these guys are actually that safe, which is actually true of closes in general, but I think it's almost even more true now. Teams are going more by committee generally. Injuries seem to be happening more and more. I mean, I yeah. actually do have Edwin, Edwin Diaz at the top of my list, and that shows you how uncomfortable this whole thing is. He is coming back from a full year of not pitching, and I still have him ranked number one. Why is that? I do have Josh Hader, too. But Josh Hader has Ryan Presley breathing down his neck, and he's he's just one year removed from a lot of struggles for that, you know, blip of month and a half or something where he was so bad. So I still think he's a great pitcher, but I have him number two. I do agree with Ross Jordan Romano way up there on my list. I have him third. He didn't have that great of a year last year, but he's been consistent and he's been in that role for a long time, and he was great in that role of last year. He was fine. He wasn't bad. So I put him at number three. That's the main thing I was looking for was safety, security. Um, Camilla Duvall, I do have him at number four. And some of it's it's job security, but also to Ross's point, if you're playing on a team that's going to be in a lot of close games, you're going to get more saves in all likelihood. I mean, I understand the team has to win for you to get a save, but Evan Phillips is going to be in a lot of 10 to one games. I, I, I don't actually, I'm not that high on him. I do have him in my top 10, but mostly because of job security. Now, number five, I actually felt like this was a total crapshoot. I was looking at it because I'm actually not as high on class A, maybe because I'm a Cleveland fan and I saw. <laughs> so, you know, you know, well, I'm a little too I close also, to it. Yeah, I'm go also ahead. under the impression that um, he's going to be a Baltimore Oriole by July 31st because Kimbrel you can't count on in Baltimore. And then all of a sudden he's going to a contender and you're going to see. All right. Well, that's that's an interesting point. I, I actually I, I will argue with you on Kimbrel in, in a little because I think you can rely on him. I'll get into that in a little, but he's not my number five. When I was looking at number five, I was like, well, who do, who do I choose? I actually, I ended up going with Paul Seawald. <laughs> he, oh yeah, I love him in Arizona. He's my six. And and he's got massive strikeouts to go along with and, really great pitching. And, and, and just to let everybody know, if you go back three years and watch our shows or two years, when he was on Seattle, Dan was always pushing for Paul Seawald. That's right. <laughs> always. Yes. So this is not a, like, what have you done for me lately type of pick for him. He's always been a. Yeah. Now I will say, uh, Uncle Ted mentioned David Bednar on Pittsburgh, who I love. 
I yeah. had him lower in my ranking when I originally did this ranking because he, he had an injury and, and it wasn't clear whether he was coming back. He's now starting to look good in that way. So I could easily see him going into yep. the number five spot. I don't have him there, but it's close. Yeah, but remember, uh, let, Bernard's going to be traded. He'll be traded by All-Star break. I mean, he's not going to be a pirate. That's what we say every year, but he hasn't been traded yet. That's I, true, I, but it is eventually going to happen. Last year. It was in my list. But I really <laughs> feel this year, year before. Next, year, next year he's a free agent, so they're not going to sign him. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to I be mean, rid a, of him. A Pittsburgh so closer gone. who's going to be a free agent next year, he's automatically going to another team. He he's might gone. close ball, though, he wherever gone. he gets traded. But he might, he, you know, in previous years when we talked about Bednar, we worried that he would get traded and then he wouldn't have a job as a closer. Um, now I think he's probably going to get traded to be a closer. Okay, Uncle Ted says Phil, uh, Phil Maton or Maton, I don't even Maton. know. And Kirby Yates, Kirby Yates, that's a blast from the past, are going to be the Razors, the, the Rays and Rangers. Oh, the Razors. The Ra <laughs> they should name them a team of Razors. Um, yeah, the Rays and Rangers, the Razors. I like Pete Fairbanks. I have him as number probably 10 or 11 on my <laughs> list. I have him 11. Um, so I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not fully buying into Phil Matano, though Matano's a really good closer. Kirby Yates, I, I mean, look, we don't trust anybody else. And Yates is only a few years removed from being an all-star closer. So you never know. Like that's, those are the picks I, you take late in the draft or the guys you stare yeah. at on the waiver wire until you see, as soon as you see Leclerc give up a three run home run, you grab him and put him on your bench. Yeah. But, and, or if you're speculating, but, but the thing is they're going to be back end. I would never rate, rate those guys. And I don't think uncle Ted would either rate them really highly because they don't have the job security. They're, they're in a market where, it's probably going to be a committee at first, and we got to see who emerges. Kirby Yates was dominant, though, as the Padres closer. Of, I think it was three years ago now. Um, so we know he can do it. But yeah. I look at those situations. I actually think Pete Fairbanks is much safer than people think. He yeah, is I, like, I mean, when he's been healthy, he's been a good pitcher. So I have him at number 11. Let's round out our top 10. Ross, I'll, I'll jump back to you. Who else do you have there? Um, Evan Phillips, um, Dave Roberts said beginning of the spring training that my closer is going to be Evan Phillips. The projection on the Dodgers is 105 games to win this year. So even if we blow out some teams, like you said, Dan, I get it. But you're, still, you're if he gets opportunity, sure. You're, you're going to get some baits. And he was awesome last year. I mean, he was, he was, he, he threw unbelievable. He was, he was really on last year. And I think Evan Phillips could be a good steal for you. Ryan Hensley of St. Louis, as much as I hate the Cardinals, I hate the Cardinals. Um, Hensley, Hensley has some explosive stuff, and the Cardinals always have a competitive team. I just need to I stop and ask. Them. So you hate the Cardinals just as a Reds fan? Just it's Yeah, the, like I was thinking Casey the same thing. Like, I, they seem so yeah. unhateable to me. Yeah, they do. I actually love Unless them. you're a Cubs fan, I don't Fox. see them as hateable. I don't well, hate the Reds. you hate the White Sox, Dr. Dan Ratner. Casey hits the Red Sox. And I hate. Yeah, the, the, I mean, it makes Cardinals. it makes sense. No, it makes sense that you would hate the Cardinals. But from for an outsider, I'm just saying. Oh, the Cardinals. Yeah, they've are always been probably one of those, my favorite NL team. Right, they've always uh, been one of those organizations oh. that you would say do things the right way. So, yeah, maybe that's another reason Ross hates them. Uh, all right, I'm, keep I'm going. Not you, a, I'm not a fan. I, and then Paul Seawald, I had I've had in the top ten. I think Arizona is going to compete like they did last year. Still, I think it's the Dodgers' division to lose, and then. You know, I'll say it, and you guys will argue with me, but Kenley Jansen of the Red Sox, every year people say, oh, he's done, he's too old, he's not, he's not going to pitch well, he's not going to get any saves. I, I think there's still some gas in that tank. Um, I think he'll get some saves. And and the Red Sox will win 80 games. You know, they're not going to lose. You know, they'll, they'll be 500, and they'll win 80, and he'll have 35 saves. So, so there he, you go. He He's a solid closer to me, but he's in the he's in the second ten for me, and actually towards the back. And one of the reasons is he, he he does have that heart condition where he and I certainly don't wish anything on him at all, but he's ended up on the on the IL a lot with that. So he just has some risk built into him along with the age. But I don't disagree with you, Ross. He could easily end up being a top ten closer. He's a solid solid pitcher. That that bullpen doesn't have a ton behind him, as far as I know. And he's got the role very clearly. Yeah, All right, Casey. Have, like, yeah, I, mean, I just don't trust yeah, like not to start. right. Like the Angels closer last year was um, Estevez. Was, Estevez. Estevez. And he had a great first half. Second half, he fell apart. He lost he his job. Completely imploded. Right. Yeah. I mean, after he did our show, he fell apart. So no, I. No, I mean actually, Ross. To your 
this fits with the point that really all three of us are making. It is a, it is a year where there's not a lot of safety at this spot. And that's true every I think year. Right. Even but, I also think, but I also think there's there's more depth this year than there's been in a while where you feel like and you know where you feel like the setup guys can also at least give you good peripherals yeah, no, even if they're not getting saves. That's a good point too. The committee setup means that you can have a really nasty guy who usually is a holds guy who's going to pick up four like, to five saves. Like Yanni or Cano from last year with Baltimore. I don't know if you remember him pitching behind ba- Bautista. And, and so you lost Bautista and Devin Williams. You know, yeah, two right. two probably, guys who would be our top four closers on everybody's list. They probably list. would be the top two. Actually. They could even be one and two. But Cano was a guy who his numbers for at least a three-month stretch, I think there was like, like 11 appearances or 13 appearances where he didn't give up a base runner. I mean, yeah. so there's just, there's depth that there hasn't been before. Yeah. Um, but you're right. The problem with depth is it means the closers don't have as long of a leash because there's always somebody behind him who can get out. Yep. And actually, I think managers are, are, they're quick to pull the plug even mid game. I mean, if, even if their closer is in and is struggling, they're going to bring in somebody who's, you know, right. They, they want to win the game, you know? All right. Case, let, we're, who else is in your top 10? That was left out. Uh, Uncle Ted did say Dylan Tate will close in Baltimore. He he was a candidate to close at various points in Baltimore he's before. Not, was he insane? I mean, I don't. No, well, listen, Uncle Ted likes bold predictions, which I appreciate about him. But I I don't I I just don't see that being likely. I'm not saying it's it's Kimbrough. Or it's Kimbrough. What's he talking about, Dylan Tate? Dylan Tate. Well, Kimbrough's will be in the got minor. the job now. He's saying well, we'll end up the closer. Right. Yeah. He's in two years, if they now. don't trade for one, because. There is concern about Cano's ability to close games. They don't think he really has the head for it, that he's the guy who can come in in the seventh or eighth inning when there's traffic on the bases and tough righties coming up and his his fastball slider is is pretty wicked. But, okay, so um, I told you I had Seawald at six. I have uh, Romano at seven. I had um, Andres Munoz at eight, Who and, and I agree with Ross. He could end up in the top five. Um, at number nine, I, I put Alexis Diaz there in Cincinnati, but I also have him as my bust pick. Um, just because again, job security, that's going to be a good offense. So even if their starters give up runs, I think it could be a lot of close games. So I think you could get a lot of opportunity. And then number 10, I, this is going to be, um, just fantasy for me, but I put Clay Holmes at 10. I had to- <laughs> I mean, I have Clay Holmes at 15. It's not, um, just it's not because uh, I, you know, know Yankee he, relief pitchers are all he had. A, he had back issues last year. They say he's healthy, but everybody says I'm in the best shape of my life in spring. Um, and Always. when he was healthy two years ago, like he was dominant. Like, and so if he gets that sinker going again, I think he can. Well, not only that, if you if you look at his numbers, they really weren't bad last year in aggregate. I, you know, maybe he had a stretch. He had like a really bad, bad couple months. Right. Which in a bad couple months is that's pretty bad. And when you're baseball. when you're only pitching one inning at a time, if you have a really bad inning, all of a sudden that handicaps you for nine appearances. You give up three runs. That means you have to throw nine shutout innings or eight shutout innings to make it a three ERA. Yeah, I call that an, an Amir Garrett. Do you remember this? Amir oh. Garrett of the Reds. Sorry, Ross. Yes. Uh, at the time. Was this and he, and he was a starter fight. also. Was this when he tried to oh, fight the boy. entire? I can't. I, I don't remember what happened. All I know is I put him into my starting lineup, and he allowed ten runs in a third of an inning. And <laughs> I remember, and, like, and he texted me, and you were all mad at me, at me like I did something. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Right. Now that is untrue. Uh, just to clear the airwaves, I did not tell Ross it was his fault, but he does love to joke. All right, I'm going to go through the back end of my top ten. Uh, I have uh, John Duran. Um, he, he's a fireballer. Like he's in a great role. I have Bednar next. He, Bednar probably would be higher if he didn't have any injury background going on. But I Doesn't do agree. Bednar sound like a terrorist? <laughs> Bednar. I mean, sounds like a sounds Bednar like a sounds terrorist. like a terrorist. Yeah, it's kind That's of uh, keep going. Uh, then I have Evan Phillips. Then I have yeah. nobody's talked about this guy. This guy's he's just steady. He's not flashy, you know, in terms of picks for closers. <clears throat> but Rizal Iglesias has done really well, and he's on the Braves now. Again, I agree with Ross's point. I'm not looking at the good the good teams as if that's a huge boost. It's not necessarily. All these closers are going to get a lot of saves. They're going to get, you know, most people are going to be in the 30 to 35 range. 
Last on the top 10, I do have Class A. I wasn't comfortable with it because I'm just worried that he's... If those problems continue, he's not going to last that long. Now, he I think he's got he's got the pitching stuff to do it. And so I have him ranked at 10. We'll get into the next 10 in a second, but we've got a comment coming in. Uncle Tez says, Tanner Scott was a 90-point pitcher on fan tracks last year. That's the site we're playing our uh, our uh, Dynasty League on. That's only 10 points less than Cole at 100. Okay, I do want to say this about fan tracks, though. The way that they rank pitchers is crazy. I don't know what is happening, but it has certain valuations that are just out of control. So if you see closers that are way <laughs> high up on fan tracks, that's not true on other sites. Yeah, and look, I mm-hmm. liked uh, Tanner Scott. He's in Miami now, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. And he's going to start as their closer, and he certainly could pitch great for, out of the gate and 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 keep just that job. keep that job. Or he could have a bad two weeks, and because – he doesn't have a track record of anybody's trust. You could see somebody like AJ Puck or something like that, who's this big hulking lefty with a killer fastball slider combo, come in and take the job. Um, my fear with Scott is the lack of job security. Yeah. Right? And so that's why I have him actually ranked 20th. I mean, he, he's a solid I have him 17. Closer. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move into the next 10. Th- there's still a lot of great value here. Yeah, this but, is where I have mm-hmm. um, Bednar at 11. I have Pete yep. Fairbanks at 12. I went with Ryan Helsley um, in St. Louis at 13. Kenley at 14 and uh, Evan Phillips at 15. Mm-hmm. Well, we've got similar rankings. Ross, how about you? I gave my dirty. I was first. You, you, but we're at, we're no, at, the, we did we're at 11 through 15. Through 15. Did you only go 10 oh, deep, Ron? I think you only I went 10 deep. I don't think, so. okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. Um, hold on. I, I put it in my phone so I could go right to it, but for some reason I can't. Uh, so I'll, t- I'll tell you what, I'll jump in for uh, you if you're not ready. I have Alexis, I have Alexis Diaz, the Cincinnati Reader. Um, I think he'll have. I also took a chance on the San Diego Padre closer, Japanese Masui. Um, okay. Is that how you say it? Yep. Masui, I like him a lot. He's not healthy right now, but I think he'll be ready by 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 the regular season. Um, Craig Kimbrough, I have in the in that in the just because he plays in Baltimore. Baltimore, to me, is going to is one of the top teams in the American League, and Adbert Alzal. Alzali. Um, that is a nightmare Club. for Ross to pronounce that I name. I can't say it. Adbert Alzale. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I think he'll be good. And then I'll take a chance on Jose Alvarado at Philadelphia. I Somebody has to close there. And I think it's he's his job right upside. now. Um, I just feel the Phillies are going to be a playoff team. And they, they have a lot of close one-run games the whole year. Um, Alvarado to me is somebody I like a lot. And another team that I'm going to Uncle Ted's already on top of, and he loves the closer there, is in Detroit, is Alex Lange. Um, I mean, this guy is those heat. He just, problem with this is, is his control. I mean, if he can control his fastball, the, the Tigers are not a bad team this year. I think the Tigers are going to compete. I really do. I think their lineup is good, and I think they have pretty, some pretty good. Well, they have Skirball, who I think is going to compete for the Cy Young. How about that? Because Cole's not going to be competing this year for the Cy Young. Casey Scheifel. It, it almost out. sounded like you said he was going to compete for the Heisman Trophy. You were, you were on your way that. towards saying Cole is, Cole, Cole has three, I mean, the Cy Young this year in the American League, it's wide open. And that yeah, all I being – I know ball have taken it. Yeah, I, I think like it's Scribble. Corbin Burns. You think it'll be Corbin Burns? Well – there's a we'll lot see. of candidates. I mean, it's. It, I agree with Ross. It is wide open. So I'm going to mention my my next five. I had Pete Fairbanks at number eleven. Uh, just, okay. I mean, I'm looking at these guys who have like almost thirty more strikeouts than innings pitched and are also. I know, but the problem the thing about Tampa Bay pitching. Tampa Bay pitching is this: they don't allow their starters to go more than five innings, and they and they do like a whole shuffle when it comes to. Tampa Bay is the worst for this. They're the worst. I mean, I, I, I never question. take any of their relief pitch. I don't trust them at all. I, um, I don't disagree with you, Ross, but actually, it's a sign of how little I trust because it's a sign of how little I trust this whole board. Because Alexis Diaz, I have next. 
his second half was terrible. And so I, I similar to Casey, I ranked him 12th overall, but I have him as a bust. I'm not saying he is going to be a bust. I'm, I'm, the he, Reds have he's one of, bullpen. And he's the only guy I trust. So there you go. Yeah. But at the same time, with that second half, he had you could still I be could, a bust, even though you're the best reliever in the bullpen. And you could end up not not having it. Uh, anyway. I think it's, it's a good pick. I, I'm not I'm not arguing. It's a good pick. <laughs> okay, now at number thirteen, I have Craig Kimbrell. If you look at Craig Kimbrell's numbers, they're just always good. I mean, he had one season where it wasn't good, and I think he was injured during a lot of it. And he yeah. strikes out a ton of guys. So I'm looking at that. I think he's going to run away with that. So well, he gets. Bed. I don't see Dylan he gets knocked. He get his reputation gets knocked pretty badly because of his playoff record. If you look at his numbers when it gets to October, they sure. go in the tank. And so, okay. but that's everybody's lasting opinion, lasting memory of him when it comes to the start of the next season. It's like, wait, I just saw him get shellacked for the Phillies. That's it's or I mean, for it, the Braves or for the Padres or for the Red Sox, everywhere he's gone. But see, that is I do think that's one of the secrets to doing well in fantasy fantasy baseball is you can't pay attention to the reputation. You got to look at the numbers. And I also, I, I'd watch some games to see what it looks like. But I mean, Kimbrel, when you strike out the side, it, it used to be called a Kimbrel. Like that that was what it was called yeah, in certain perfect circles. Inning. And, and he still got it. He's done it again and again and again. And I also really like the Orioles this year. Again, I'm not tying it to team wins all that much, but I'm just looking at solidity. So I have a guy, Andres Munoz is next complete fireballer he could be great but he he doesn't he hasn't claimed the role for good and you never know this is my this is the hard spot for me with guys like Munoz you don't know how people are going to respond in their heads when they get in that role so you could take Munoz and he should be the closer and he could completely implode right away I, I, anybody could but I'm just saying because we don't we haven't seen him stick through the role I'd be much less comfortable with him than Kimbrell for example Kimbrell's been through it. I know he's going to be able to hold on to that role. Uh, so then I have at number 15, it made Ross laugh before, but I think Clay Holmes does belong there. He, he, he put up decent numbers, even in a fairly bad season. And I think he's got a decent amount of job security. So yeah. that's what I'm looking for at the top. Okay. Now we're getting into the back end of the next of, of the top 20 case. Who's left over for you? Well, you just say mentioned it. Okay. Say it. A few of them. Um, I mean, in the in no particular order, I, that's where I have Kenley Jansen. That's where I have Craig Kimbrell. Um, I have Tanner Scott in there. And then it's like, I think Jose Alvarado should end up the closer in Philadelphia. I love his stuff. I have him but, at number 19. But And so he's right around there for me also. And one. then I went with um, <clears throat> Alex Lang in Detroit. Um, again, just because... This isn't his first year closing, which gives to me that track record gives you a little bit of stability. And I think Detroit's a surprise team this year and they pitch in a weaker division offensively. So it's not as scary of a, a proposition. So I'm not hearing you guys talk about Iglesias in Atlanta so much. Is he not on your list? I just, I thought he was. I have, him, I have, him, I have him number 12. Yeah, he, he should have been that somewhere. He should have okay. been somewhere in there for me. I missed him. So I will, I will say this. Jose Alvarado, even though I have him ranked 19. If he gets that closer role, he goes way up the charts on this. And so it, that's built into his ranking is that he might not close, but yeah. he also would be a dominant closer if he does. Uh, Uncle Ted made this point, and I think this is a good one for us to talk about. He said, holds is the thing people don't know about enough. I agree with that. And a lot of leagues don't have holds. Ours does. And right. one of the reasons we did it is we, we wanted to get the valuation of players more like it actually is in baseball. I mean, these guys are incredibly valuable. These eighth oh, inning yeah. guys who always hold the games or sometimes closers come in in a hold situation and they get a hold, but they don't get a save. It's still value. And I, so if you're in a holds league, I think Jose Alvarado is a guy you need to have. I mean, because he's probably going to get some saves and some holds with dominant numbers. You guys agree with that? Yes. All yeah, right. so, Alvarado, yeah, for sure. But I mean, I'm just saying in a holds league, it's it makes him all the better. My back end is Ryan Helsley, Adbert Alzale. Uh not even Alzale, Hector Neris scares me in Chicago with Alzale. Oh, oh, you think he's looming? I think he's looming. That's that's why he wasn't up there for me. Yeah, actually, you know what? That that's a good point. I probably would bump Kenley Jansen above him just because right. of that. 
actually, you could say the same thing about Helsley with Gallegos behind him, you know, and yeah. Helsley had had a rough patch last year also, as well as being injured at one point. And then rounding out the top, that top 20, I, I do have Tanner Scott, but you know, there's only 30 teams. So once you get to 20, you know, you're looking at the back end. Now, with that in mind, let's talk about sleepers, busts, and value picks. This is going to include holds, guys, by the way. We can talk about sleepers, busts, and value picks when it comes to closing, but let's think about holds as well. Because there are people out there who are wondering, all right, well, you know, how do I get holds, guys? By the way, for anybody who doesn't know, a hold is when a pitcher pitches in a high leverage situation late in the game and they just hold the lead. It, it's exactly what it sounds like. They don't get the that's save. The, they don't close less out than the three game. runs. Less than three runs. It's the eighth inning. And well, less runs than innings left. Less runs than you. outs left. Right, right. Similar rules to saves, but it just happens earlier. Okay, guys, throw out, let's say, two sleepers each. Ross, I'll start with you. Um, let's have fun. I'm wearing an A shirt. So let's go Mason Miller of the Oakland A's. Casey, you like that nice. one? I pulled that. Yep, nice. I like that, that, one. that one. Nicely done. It made you laugh when I said Mason and then, Miller might be worth a known. Mason Miller. And then, shoot, you know what's going to make a great spring? is Jordan Leisure, the White Sox. He could be their closer. I know White Sox probably won't win, won't win many. But I like taking those sleepers that no one's ever heard of. I, I guarantee Uncle Ted has never heard of Jordan Leisure of the Chicago White Sox. Oh, so, uh, Uncle Ted has heard of everybody. Well, has I mean, he's shoot. definitely heard of them. He's probably predicting they will be the closer. But keep going. Okay, well, I, I, I'll take you. Let's take Will Smith of Kansas City then, because I have Will Smith in our, as the catcher in, my, in our fantasy league. So I might as well take the other Will Smith of Kansas City to, to be the ultimate closer who – What's the stat on him, Casey? Like he's been on three World Series teams in a he's row, won three or something? in a row. Yeah, three World Series in a row. <laughs> three World That's Series. A, I mean, in a row? Or, he, he, wait, yeah. he actually won the World Series three years in a row. I mean, obviously he didn't win it. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. He's on the because team that won the World Series three years. In a row. <laughs> well, yeah. I think he's he's either going to break that streak this year or get traded. Kansas City, or us, but Will Smith. Let's take him as one of my sleepers. Let's go. I like him as a sleeper. Case, what about you? Name some sleepers. Uh, I had Mason Miller on my list, so I'll let leave him yes. alone there. Um, Love it. One guy who I think could be sneaky, who people aren't talking about, is Julian Merriweather of the Cubs. Mm. Like a lot of people, don't even know who he is. But I, I don't like the closers on the Cubs. I don't like Nerys to keep that job very much either. And I see. Um, I see council going with a closer by committee. Merriweather has pretty nasty stuff. I could see him getting you sneaky 10 to 15 saves in the same amount of holes. So that's somebody who I, I really like um, to get stuff done there. And um, I'm going to go with Devin Williams is out. Most people are assuming it's going to be Joel Piomps, P-A-Y-A-M-P-S. Yeah, he's good. You're going to go with um, Miguel? He is good. I'm going with Abner Uribe. Oh, Abner Uribe. Look at his numbers from last year. Like he was pretty nasty too. I just picked him up in our di or, or I shouldn't say this. I put in a waiver claim for him in our dynasty league because I do think oh, he's a Dan, pick it up. Now, now, bit now that now that Devin <laughs> Williams um, is out for an extended period of time, I think even if he doesn't get the closers job, to me he becomes the holds guy, and he might also get the closers job. So that's somebody who's a sleeper value who you can get off of any waiver wire. I think in any league. I doubt he's been drafted. Yeah, well, also, I mean, in holds mm. leagues, you you you, you got to remember there's there's going to be a ton of these guys who are available. You can always get a good holds guy, but if you look at it, their numbers are just disgusting. I mean, Casey and I have talked about this a lot, Ross, and I think we've talked with you about it over the years. If you have two middle relievers that are that dominant, they're a starter. They're, they're basically two thirds of an ace, not just a starter, an ace. And if I just to put one more thing out there, when it comes to relief pitchers. Don't if if you have if you manage to sneak through the draft with three healthy, really good closers, but you have to fill other relief pitcher spots. There are a lot of starting pitchers with relief pitcher available with eligibility, you know, and guys like Michael King, who was traded to the to the uh, Padres in the um, Juan Soto trade, was amazing last year. If you look at his numbers, he was the Yankees' best pitcher going down the. Uh, it's actually another uh, reason I like Clay Holmes this year is Michael King's not. There. Um, you know, Cole Reagans or Raggins, the the starter for Kansas City, the kid who just came in was crazy impressive 
another one who qualifies at relief pitcher, Nick Pavetta, Ryan Pepio, who went to Tampa Bay. Don't be afraid to take these guys and stick them into your relief pitcher role, especially if instead of chasing saves and taking these guys who might get you a save, might get you 10 to 12 saves, but their peripherals are going to be crap. Don't be afraid to take these guys and put them in there because they're a lot more helpful. Let me just add to that point, Casey. You also can can kind of go the other way with it. You can get a, rel- a relief pitcher who has starting pitcher eligibility and pitch. Let's say you can pitch eight p- pitchers. You could pitch eight relief pitchers a day. And if you are, if your starting pitching staff is injured, you can make up a lot of innings that way. So look for guys who are middle relievers with starting pitching eligibility. They can get you holds. They sometimes can get you saves. They're going to get you great numbers. And then, as Casey's saying, you can go the opposite way. You can get extra starters in there in the relief spot. Uh, I'm going to name a couple sleepers that haven't been mentioned so far. Uh, how old is Aroldis Chapman now? Oh, gosh. He's I what, would say, I, I hate to get because people call me on it. I'll say 33. Casey? Oh, right, no, let's, he's let's much older up. than that, isn't he? I'll look it up. I, I think he's I, much older than that. But he came up I like Aroldis early. Chapman. His strikeout uh, ratio to innings pitch is still very high. Bednar's a little bit yep. injured. He could get traded. He's I also think the role of Chapman turned, get traded. He turned 36 years old in February. Oh, I thought 30, ah, I was off by three years. Ah. Oh, it that's, happened. The age he yeah. gave, that's the age he gave the MLB. He's not, he's probably younger. He's probably lied. Like, I'm sure he lied. You mean, yeah, I think old. he's probably older then. Uh, but I think Aroldis Chapman is a great pick, especially in a holds league. He gets those great strikeouts. He's well, and if Bednar situation. is traded, like everybody's predicting. Right. See, I mean, then... that's ultimately what I want out of my holds guy is that they close for half the year because then they're going to give me save stats and hold stats with great numbers. Aroldis Chapman's one of those guys. I think David Robertson is another. I actually think he will take that job in Texas. So I'd be going after him. He's old. Another... David Robertson long... is old. Do either of you know he how is. long Matt Brash is hurt for? I think he's injured, isn't he? Uh, he is Matt injured. Brash. I actually don't know how long he's out for. Let me look that up. Because... While you're looking that up, I'm going to mention one other name that nobody – I'm going to mention two that nobody mentioned. I bet, uh, I bet Robert, we have. Rob, you have not. I've been listening. Robert Stevenson of Robert the Stevenson. Los Angeles Angels. If you think Estevez is not going to hold it, yeah. I Well, I think based on his second half, I, I think it's very good to speculate on Stevenson. Uh, I also think Robert Suarez in San Diego. I know you were saying Yuki Matsui. One of those two is going to emerge. Yeah. And so, I mean, I Suarez don't... right now has the job. I mean, Suarez has the job, but I just think well, Matsui's going to take from him. Very, very possible. But uh, last year they said the same thing about Estevez. He had the job, and everyone was like, I don't think he's going to hold it. And then he was great that first half. And now, granted, he was terrible the second half, but he did have a very valuable first half. So, those are those are my sleepers. Uh, anybody else to mention in sleepers, guys, before we move to busts? Well, Matt Brash is is he's working his way back from elbow inflammation, which is scary, right? Um, but they expect him a little bit back by the end of April. Mm-hmm. And this kid is just you want to talk about a fireballer. I really like him, and I think if Munoz struggles in Seattle, Brash is definitely uh, would be a guy to uh, pounce on. So yeah, well, I that- think he's a sleeper. That's a good, it's a good recipe for success when you're looking at your holds guys. And by the way, he had more than he had at least, I think by the end of September, he had 25 holds last year. Yeah. So you want to look for the eighth inning guy uh, and a strikeout guy. If you're looking at your holds pitchers, because you want them to get saved some of the time. Uh, Nobody's going to win a fantasy league because they dominate holds. You do need to hold your own. Sorry for the pun, but (laughs) you, you do need to, compete in the category, but it's not the category I'm looking for. I'm more looking for pitchers who are going to give me numbers across the board. Yeah. All right. Um, if let's you want to look at some uh, crazy numbers. Look at yeah, Hunter Harvey of Washington. Washington Nationals Hunter Harvey has a strikeout to innings ratio. And this guy in the minors will also if they give him, if they let him close this year, he could be top losers in the league, I think. But I, I think Finnegan has a job. But hopefully for now, I think Hunter- but, yeah. so in holds leagues, Hunter Harvey. Hunter Harvey is a great one to have. It's just he plays on. I don't know how many opportunities I can get holds, but uh, he's a great young arm. Just keep an eye on him. You're asking me who who I like a sleeper. Yeah, well, I, and I club. also will say, really bad teams are probably still going to win sixty games. Yeah. So, the, you know, they'll they'll get holds. All right, let's move to bus case. Give give me two of your bus. <laughs> 
I feel like I, I already told you Alexis you Diaz. Said, yeah, and I have him there too. Um, but my oh. other two are also my top two closers. Yep. Edwin Diaz I, and Josh Hader. Because right. A, we haven't seen Diaz pitch in a year, right? Like if he's if there's rust, if he's not as fit for game action, all you have to do is struggle your first three games as a closer and you're pitching one third, two third, or, you know, maybe an inning and your ERA is atrocious. It takes a while to come back from that. And Hader has Presley right behind him, you know? And so that always worries me. He did have a, a, a hiccup a couple of years ago. Like that's what we're, but also I don't like paying the price for them. The price you have to pay to get the two top closers Right. Scare sometimes, me. sometimes a bust is related to the price that's built in. To me, it. a bust is always related to the price. If you get it for cheap, it's not a bust because it's a dart throw at that point. So I, I agree. I, um, that, that, I think for the most part, that's true. The only thing, the way I would say you could be a bust if you're at the back end is if the hype is so huge and you're going to let everybody down. You know, I don't think at the closer yeah, position, I'm not worried bust, about it. Bust is performance compared to draft value. Right. Yeah. And so even if the hype is up here, but you got him in the 16th round. No, well, I, I agree with you in one way case. I, I think that is the main way to define bust is, you know, where did you get him versus the value that you're going to get? But I do think the other way that you can, you can um, put a bust in is to say, everybody thinks he's good. It's basically you betting against everybody else. You're right. saying it's not about the value necessarily. It's also just saying, I don't buy it. I'm not buying yeah. this one, right? So um, I have Andres Munoz down as one of those. I'm, I, I think he's not going to come through there. Do I know why? I, it's just a gut instinct, but he's he's a mid-range closer. He hasn't done it before, and I think that could be trouble. Uh, we've got somebody who knows Uncle Ted here. Groovy T says, Uncle Ted. Uh, Uncle Ted, it looks like you've got a friend here. Okay, now, uh, <laughs> Uncle Ted said, can you all do a draft recap? That sounds fun. Uh, From I our think fantasy spend... draft or the MFSN draft tonight? Uh, I think he's talking about the fantasy draft that we had last week. Well, that's what he wants. Said, you let me know. However, however you tell, go on the fan, go on our dynasty league and tell everybody about Ted's team, and we'll we'll criticize every every pick he did and make fun of it. It'd be great. Go. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to do that next time because we're running low in time. But we will get to. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great idea, Uncle Ted. By the way, we do have a draft tonight. This is our redraft league for MFSN. We're going to be putting it on YouTube. So that's actually when that's in three four thirty right? Pacific seven 30 Eastern on MFSN on our in YouTube channel. Please watch. You can ask questions. You can tell us good job or bad job. Casey will be taking Dan Williams as his first pick. So please give your no. comments. On it. No, no. And no. I oh, will be cool. taking, even though it's a no tight end league, I will be taking a tight end. We still be taking, excited Derek, about it. I'm taking as a his kicker. First I'm taking he's taking the Yankee Garrett Cole as his first. I'm taking Martin Gramatica. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get back to bus. I also think uh, I have Kenley Jansen down as a bus, but I don't feel so comfortable with that because he, he's he's every year back, people say Kenley Jansen. Every, every year, but I actually don't. I actually don't. I just I just have a feeling this is maybe the end of the road. Carlos Estevez, I also have as a bus. Ross, how about you? Clay Holmes, Costari Case, Clay Holmes, bus. He'll be out of a job he by May. Is Mama calling Clay? He'll, calling Clay? he'll be good. He'll That's be fine. Gone. Then they'll then it's Emmanuel um, Place. They'll trade for him. Just because you guys been talking about Pete Fairbanks so much, thinking he'll be like a legitimate closer, he's not. A, he's a not. You I'm making what? a I'm bus. Glad you did that, Ross. It'll help. Tampa Bay. Not not. Yeah, Tampa Bay. You can't trust Tampa Bay with closers. They don't give that many opportunities to the same guy yeah, to but close he, games. Let's say he gets twelve. Cl- tw- 12 or 14 saves, but also gets okay. 12 to 15 holds. If you're in a holds league, to me, that's good enough. Okay. Th- right, that's okay. I like the if, you, but again, if you're, don't, just don't draft him high in your, don't draft him in the top 20 relief pitchers. That's all I ask. Groovy T says Pete Fairbanks has a condition that doesn't allow him to pitch in cold weather. He is Australian, I think. So. That's true. So, you know, yeah. Under. And there is a Fairbanks, Alaska, too, which makes sense. That's, that's <laughs> so there Florida. you go. I, yeah. he, he's all over the place. He's all now, over the Now it makes perfect sense. He wow. missed now time early cool. in the season last year. Interesting. Now I get it. Fairbanks, Alaska, can't pitch in cold weather. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have this okay. same thing with 
I pitched. I could not pitch in cold weather either. It has to be at least or against six guys days. named Mark. And no. <laughs> Let, let, let's finish up with value picks, guys. I have two kinds of relief pitchers that are value picks. They're either guys that have a tentative, a tentative hold on the closer job that people think aren't going to hold it. You know, guys like uh, Justin Lawrence in Colorado, I think he has the hold on the job at the moment, <laughs> and nobody's Lawrence. really talking about him. And nobody wants a Colorado closer either. But no, nobody know. wants a Colorado starter. Who wants a Colorado? There's two. Who draft from Colorado this year? KC, do you want to tell us who they are? Do I want to Jones? tell you who to draft from Colorado? Yeah, well, no oh, you That's mean it. offensive players? Sure. I, I don't. Yeah, Ezekiel Tovar, I guess you could draft. That's it from the team. That's it. Don't pick anybody else from Colorado. I, I, I well, I agree with you, except Justin Lawrence. I, I think he's. A I would draft player. Justin Lawrence at the end of a draft. Sure. Why not? Why not? I mean, sometimes you got to slop your way to some saves. Um, I think that I I've said Craig Kimbrell, I think is a value. I think Ryan Presley is a value. Let's start to talk a little bit about holds and we'll wrap up here guys. But who are some of your favorite holds guys? Cause a holds guy is always going to be a value pick because you're never going to take a holds guy. I mean, when's the highest you would take a holds guy, like in a 12 team league, maybe round 20 and in a 10 team league around 24. Yeah. yeah I mean, I talked about Matt Brash already. Um, I like, like I like the holds guys in both New York teams. Loizaga was filthy when he was healthy. Oh, um, L- Johnny Lasagna? Yeah, Johnny Lasagna. And then I like David Robertson, right? If Edwin Diaz is the closer, it was Robertson and... Um, well, Robert, Robertson's in, in Texas now. Though. Oh, what, did he go to Texas? Yeah, okay. yeah. So well, then it's what Adovino. I like Adovino too. Adovino, so, sure. So uh, he's a, a holds guy. Uh, Groovy T says Yuki Matsui, who Ross mentioned earlier, and then Stephen Wilson was a big setup guy for San Diego and just got traded Steve to Wilson. Chicago. Yeah, good call. Good White Sox. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I like Wilson. All right, any anyone else to add value picks, and and then we're gonna let everyone. I'll, I'll give some. I'll give some. Uh, it's Joe Kelly, the Dodgers. For some reason, they just keep one of them the greatest personalities in baseball. By the way, like. <laughs> And he gave, and he gave, um, and his wife got a Porsche from. Uh, yeah, from, he gave his wife talked him into getting yeah. Shohei Otani uh, his number, so he bought Shohei. Uh, he bought his wife a Porsche as a thank you. <laughs> I mean, it'd be nice if Dan got us Porsches. Is this an idea, Dan? Uh, we're working on it. We, we're, you know, we got to get okay, our thanks. subscribers up a bit higher before we do that. Okay, I'll we're starting do my best. to go fund me. <laughs> um, also. Um, with closest, I, I like this one guy. What's his name for? Jason Adam of Tampa, oh, Tampa. Bay. Yeah, I think I don't think he'll he close sh- the match. I think he'll get a lot of holds. Jason Adam. Um, He's a good I, one too. Like he shared the clothing. He shared some clo- saves last year with Fairbanks. When Fairbanks yeah, and to Ross's point, the way Tampa cold. Bay uses their pitchers, holds you can probably bank on a lot more than saves. And then Kanoa Baltimore, who I who I yep. think Casey said this guy's. It's really hard. I don't think he'll be a closer. I just think he'll be an eighth inning guy, which is fine because, as we know, that's valuable. Um, but I think Cano will probably be probably one of the first picks when it comes to holds, I imagine. And the guy's a beast. Yeah. And I mentioned Hector Norris's Alzale's bat, um, competition in Chicago earlier. And I think he's a, a worst case scenario. He's a holds guy. Best case scenario, he gets saves. And okay, Eric Swanson uh, in Toronto. Eric Swanson I love in Toronto also. Good calls. Groovy T says Mason Miller. We did mention him before. I think that's no, a great pick. Love Mason uh, Miller. I will add Jose Alv- Alvarado we've already talked about, but I'm placing him in the value pick range as yeah, well. Yeah, you have Ranger Suarez, who's also in that bullpen. Who Right. And you know what? If, you, if you're at the back end of your draft and you had, a, you had trouble finding a closer, take them both. Yeah. Why not? It's a, it's a great Ash. way, especially early in the year. Go ahead and use those roster spots to solidify that position. You'll see who takes it, you know? All right, guys, we got to wrap up for today. We do have a draft coming up. Again, that is 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. We're going to be live drafting. You'll be able to see my screen. Uh, Unfortunately, that means you'll know who I'm queuing, but that's okay. I'll give it away. Um, And actually, I'm I'm co-drafting with Eric, who is an MFSN fan. It'll be a first time ever. He's co-managing my team. So, Come see the draft. Guys, we hope you have enjoyed our draft previews. We're going to continue our show Thursdays. That is 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And it's this is a strategy show. During the year, Casey and Ross do a waiver wire show on Tuesdays. That's also 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. So we've got two shows a week. We also have these evergreens coming up that are just about strategy in general. 
Check them out. People are really seeming to enjoy them, and we're certainly enjoying doing them. Guys, it has been a pleasure. Case Ross, thanks so much. Looking forward to this draft. Oh, yeah.